Okay, welcome to the second video in the series. So this is um, basically what I'm doing here is I'm showing how effective the trap that I was using in the first video is now. And as you can see, the mice don't seem to be that. I mean, they're happy to still sniff for the food, as you can see. But even though I've put the um, the line of bait down, it's as if this particular mouse is just not being attracted. He knows the food's in there, and but when it actually, whenever it goes to the front of the trap, you'll notice that it's not really doesn't seem to be too interested in going in there. So now it's just trying to dig its way under the door because this, admittedly, this mouse is more interested in trying to trying to escape. And you can see see the way he kind of skirted away from the trap. So here he's back again, still trying to get out. So he knows the food's there, but since he can't get to it, we know why bother. I'm just scratching his ear, I think. I don't know. And yes, he's still trying to dig his way under the door. And as you can see, it just doesn't seem to show any interest in the front of the trap. So we're back again. And still, see, he's still always going and smelling the middle of that trap. So if you wanted to go into it, or if it wanted to go into it, it would obviously have done it by now. Right, and... Because admittedly, because it's trying to get out, obviously the trap's in the way, but you can see it's showing like some sort of interest in it, but it's, as you can see, it's, um, it still doesn't really even want to go anywhere near the bait that I've put at the end. So whereas you saw how effective it was against the previous mouse, with this mouse, you can see that this one is different in the way that it responds to it, but it likes smelling the side, just doesn't like the front. And of course, here it is still trying to dig its way out. Okay, so what I did now is I switched it, I switched it around so that the, if the mouse has to go down, well basically I'm trying to force it to the front of the trap to see what it does. So you see it goes in. And if you look carefully, you can see his eyes will pop. Yeah, you can see his eye just pops up there. So he's right at the front of the trap, but he's not going to go into it. And I think what the the reason why it didn't work this time is simply because uh, the I hadn't cleaned it out properly. So I think from the previous mouse being trapped in it, this mouse can smell like the, it's something which is called alarm pheromone, so that was emitted by the previous mouse. And so I think this mouse can still smell some of it there. And so that's why it's refusing to go into the front of it, even when the bait is literally there beside it. So it's as if with, with certain mice, the bait itself just isn't good enough. And so basically the mouse has to actually you know well, be one of those mice which doesn't mind going to the trap like this. So yeah, you see it's still trying to get out. And it's sitting there in front of the trap but still refusing to go in it. And it's at this point that I realized that there was a, I think the problem was I simply hadn't cleaned the trap out well enough because I washed it with water, but I, what I hadn't done is I hadn't used the brush to actually clean out the inside properly and then do a proper rinse on it. And so as you can see, this mouse is just completely refusing it. But notice though that it doesn't mind going near to the trap. And, oh yeah, now as you can see, it managed to successfully dig its way under the door. So when it was digging its way under, it wasn't doing it for no reason. It actually had a reason why. And as you see, and this is the thing you have to watch out for. So when you close your door in the house, if there's a gap under it, 
which, which is just the, literally the thickness of your finger, then the mouse will be able to fit under it. So don't try to rely on your closed doors as a means of stopping mice from getting around your house. And I think I've seen that some people will actually put little brushes under the door. So that's one reason why you do that. Because that brush then stops a mouse from being able to crawl under the little space that's under the door. Yeah, and you see there that, that that was the first failed attempt at a trap. Because um, it wasn't done in such a way so the mouse was in a good position. So now we have this second mouse. Oh, sorry, now I'll set, reset the trap up again. And this time, uh, I think it's almost the same, but I think I, oh, yeah, I actually can't remember much of the difference, but as you can see, the, the mouse is checking the trap out. And the important thing to always notice is that the mice have no problem going under the actual trap. And I don't know if this is the same mouse, I don't think this is the same mouse as the first one, but, this is like my f first attempt to actually try to um, get the mouse to go into the actual, um, yeah, in, into the, where the bait is. And so you can see it's kind of working. Um, but as you'll notice, is one slight problem with this particular trap is the way I set this one up is that I hadn't actually, um, Fasten the the tube down properly, so so you notice it did move slightly, like it did in the first one. And the problem with that is, um, it can cause the mouse to go out of position. So if the if where if you've got the bait moves, then the mouse will move with it. And so what happens is, if the mouse ends up too close to the edge of the trap, that can then mean that the mouse can escape uh, when the trap goes down because as you'll notice in, in in the videos if you keep watching is that these mice these mice are really fast so trying to drop them this onto the mouse when it's facing outwards is basically a waste of time it'll never catch it because the minute you, it hears a sound it moves immediately so as you can see here this mouse is enjoying the bait and you're probably wondering why I haven't dropped the trap on it at this moment. And the basic problem I'm having is that this first um, implementation of the remote control setup, uh, there's actually a five second delay in the video. So I can't actually, I have to actually make, make sure the mouse is in there for at least five seconds when I let the trap down. So at this moment, because you can see how weary the mouse is, I didn't want to press it, and then five seconds later, it's out, it's, it's facing away, and escapes from the trap. So, but anyway, as you'll see in this one, um, yeah, see, so it's busy there eating the, eating the bait, and, Oh, okay. Yeah, so actually, so that's the first one caught. Um, but here's the interesting thing is you'll notice that I've caught it. Um, but as you'll see, now we have, um, now it's time for the, for the, for the, trying to catch the next one. And because it worked that first time without having the bait, um, uh, how do you say, s uh, sorry, having the tube, um, stuck to the actual, um, trap, I, I thought it'd be okay to leave the, the roll loose. But as you'll see, having the roll loose is not actually a good idea. So, so you notice that there's two mice here, so that shows when you've got a problem. So yeah, you see how the, it's trying to eat it and the, the roll actually moves. And as you notice, when the, when the tube roll moves, the, it actually makes the mouse jump. And because of this, so now the tube has moved, so actually the mouse is out of position, so it's, 
is slightly too close to the edge you know, of the trap. And so it's coming into, yeah, see, see, it's causing it to roll across. And so now you notice the mouse itself is, is towards the side of the trap. And that is a bit of a problem because he's now, especially with the five second delay. It means that I can't, it's harder for me to time uh, when to drop it on it. Yes, yeah, so you can still see it's rolling, yeah, see it's rolling around now. So that's a bit useless because it also means that the bait moves up the roll, which makes it slightly harder for the mouse to eat it. Yes, yeah, so you can already see it's well out of position there. So it keeps coming back. And you notice that it, it won't just sit there and sort of eat the bait continuously. It will eat a bit and then look around. So, and this is one thing I've noticed when I've looked at other mouse videos. And that's that the mice seem to be very, well, I don't know. They seem, it seems like they're not very careful. Because you see how these mice, they'll take a bite and they look around and might run off. And here it is again. But obviously it's rolling around, which doesn't help. And, and so notice also that the... See, the bait's there, it's food. But the, but these particular mice, they're not just going to sit there eating the bait continuously. They're, they they seem to do a lot of investigation. And you can see it's, even though the food's there, it's still sniffing around. I wouldn't say that the mouse itself is suspicious because its brain's not big enough for it to understand, you know, comp complicated things like like traps like this, but it obviously it's almost like it's just more because it's moving that that the mouse is frightened. So this is certainly a lesson that whenever you set the bait up onto a trap, it has to be on a on some sort of platform or something which won't move. Because notice that the moving bait, how it's made the mice be a lot more, run around a lot more. But as you'll see later on, you'll be able to see the difference it makes when the bait is actually um, on a stable, on a stable platform. Okay, so they're still, still going around. I notice these mice are doing a lot more running around than eating. So it's as if, when mice are in, in your home, they, they, they just seem to be a lot more careful. Because obviously they know that there are other, there are other people around. Yeah, so as you notice, this is taking a while. And this is one reason why you don't want to have that five second delay because it means that you can't actually uh, catch it properly. Okay, so finally it's time. If the mouse will give it another try. 
Okay, now we're going to find out why you should have. Yeah, see, see, notice the way the mouse will jump each time. It moves. Even though the mouse is moving itself, the mouse jumps automatically. So this, so as you can see, this is definitely a reason why you should always make sure that your bait is, is on a solid platform. So in the end, that was just really a waste of time because, all right, so now this, this one, I still haven't quite learned my lesson yet. So instead I put the bait on a little piece of card. As you can see, it's right at the back. So I thought maybe if I could get it to go all the way to the back, then it'd be easier to trap it. But the problem is I still hadn't um, uh, stuck it to the actual trap. And part of the reason for that is because it, it was lifting slightly off the ground. So as you see, along comes a mouse again. It's doing its, or these mice anyway, doing their usual investigation before they actually go to to take the um, bait. So, so notice that as it took the bait, see, it moved. So yet again, same mistake as before. I hadn't, yeah, and see, because it's at the side, and it's time for the trap to drop. The, the mouse was too close to the edge, so of course it didn't catch it. So now finally, this is the proper version where um, I've actually stuck it to the back of the trap. So now when the mouse goes in and actually tries to eat eat the bait, once it's done its investigation, of course, so it has to check everything out, look around, make sure there's no predator, and finally go and have a taste of, of the food. And notice now the actual... Um, the roll isn't moving anymore. So now, so it actually makes the, the mouse more, um, how do you say? Well, the situation is more stable because notice, because it's not moving, the mouse is actually less agitated and, will, and is, has less of a problem staying there and eating the bait. So now I have more of a chance because of the five second delay. All that I basically have to do is wait until I can see that the mouse is in a stable position. And so what this shows is that if you're going to come up with a custom mouse trap of any kind, first thing you make sure is that the, the bait is as low as possible. Uh, because I've got, I actually got a, another video where I had the bait on like a slightly raised piece of cardboard and the mouse was refusing to go on it. And but I've noticed that as long as the bait is right on the ground, there's a lot more chance of the mouse actually going through it. So you notice that this mouse is a lot more relaxed now as it's eating the food. And because of the, yeah, and see, so I was a little bit impatient here because what I, well, you see what happens in the next one. Um, but basically this particular, um, mouse, because the situation was more stable, it didn't mind actually, um, being just there eating the food without running around. And so as you can see now, that one's caught. And, and of, of course, the, it's inside the, um, uh, the, the trap. And basically there isn't any way out for it. Of course, it's going around and trying to see it's checking. It, notice what it's doing is checking above and below and the ground. So now finally we have our last mouse. And anyone, anyone who's counting might notice that there were two mice running around, but I ended up, this is going to be the third mouse that I'm catching. So just in case anyone's wondering, the reason why this is the third one, it's simply because the first one actually got away. And I don't know if that first one that got away is this mouse or the one before. So essentially, even though I dropped the trap on its head and it got, and it got trapped and it was in there, when it got away, I set, I put, I set up the same trap and the mouse walked straight into it. 
So essentially, you'll hear me talking in the next part when I'm talking about the about the mice not knowing what, what this kind of trap is. And that's the reason why I'm saying it, because simply this, either this mouse or the one before it already had the trap dropped on it. And it sim even though it managed to get away, it's now happily going straight back into the same trap. So that essentially shows you that these, this type of trap is, in my mind, like a, like an invincible trap, basically, because even if you trap a mouse in it, it has no clue what happened. Because as you can see, this mouse, all it cares about is looking for predators and having to smell around just in case there's a predator there. And of course, it's also listening for the predators as well. And notice also that it's found the, the food and this as you can see this mouse is even more safe than the previous one because the previous one once it found the food it just stayed there and was eating it, eating it but notice that this mouse see it's even though the food's there it's just not taking any risk it wants to keep going around looking checking and this is something I've noticed. I haven't really seen any of the mouse videos that I've seen on the internet so far, but maybe there are some, but I haven't found them. Because all I'm seeing are, are mice or rodents, which seem to just happily walk into the traps. Whereas, as you notice, the mice I'm having, they don't seem to be as, um, you know, it looks like, it just looks like a normal mouse to me, but then, I don't know why, for what reason, this mouse is being so intelligent. So, or not even intelligent, but it's being very safe. So as you can see, while it's eating, it keeps looking around. And, and you notice that the mouse, mice have got those two big ears on their heads. So obviously they can hear, they can hear well enough. So the mouse actually knows it can't hear anything, but regardless of that, it's still looking around. Almost as if, it's worried about some predator that makes no noise that can can sneak up on it. And you notice it, it, it sort of has some of the bait to eat. And then you'll eat it while facing away from the bait. And then have a quick run around. But now it's actually decided to, it's confident enough that things are safe. That it's even gone right into the trap now. And you're probably wondering why I haven't triggered it yet. And it's, well, what the problem I had was that there's, there was actually a bug in the software for my remote trigger code I was running on the Arduino. And so I had to actually reset it and un unplug it and replug it. And only once I'd replugged it, then finally it was ready. And then as you'll see, should be any second now, captured. So it finally it was, uh, it started up and then I was ready to um, press the capture button. And so that's this mouse capture. And so now we're on to the um, next part of the video. Okay, so here we are again. So this is the next mouse that we caught. And this actually looks like a more baby mouse because it seemed a bit more greedy for the food than the previous mouse, which was a bit more cautious. Um, but basically, I did discover something interesting about, maybe it's this particular type of mouse, I don't know, because it's young, but essentially it would not actually go up to get the um, bait at the end. Of course, as you can see, the bait's disappeared now because obviously it, it ate it while it was in here. But um, one thing I say about this mouse is some people might look at it and think that it's sweet, but I can tell you one thing for sure. This is like, this mouse is like it's supercharged because well, it's hard to, it's hard to get it to do anything. Yeah, you see what it is, the mice say that they like to go into the darkness. So admittedly, the mouse isn't as fast as it was before. But um, one thing I tell you for sure is someone might look at this mouse and think it's cute. But I tell you, if you think this is cute, try and release it from the trap and watch what happens. 
And then when you end up, if you end up having to fight with this mouse, then no, you understand that it's actually like a fighting machine, which has obviously been designed to get the job done. And what I'll do is once I've, once I've done the release part, which I'm going to be doing now, I'm going to show how I had to set this up because basically the, you can see there's bits of paper in there and there's a reason why they're in there because as I've found without laying things out properly, sometimes the mice actually won't trigger the trap. But I found so far that once you get the layout correct, that it, the amount, it, it seems like it's hundred percent now that the mouse, as long as you lay things out in a certain way, the mouse will actually fall for the trap basically. Because one thing I've discovered last night is that essentially mice, they don't actually know what traps are. All they know is predators. So since the trap doesn't look like a predator, you, it will get the mouse every time. But you have to do certain things in order to convince the mouse to actually go in there. All right, so I'm just sort of bringing it out now. You're probably wondering why I've only got one mouse inside uh, this trap that I was using before. And so what had happened is a little bit of time had gone by and then I'd given it another clean out. And it seems I cleaned it enough so that it couldn't sort of smell the pheromones from the previously trapped mouse. So this mouse is actually one of the ones that you saw in the previous clips uh, because Essentially what happened is that two of the mouse, uh, no, what the first mouse escaped, as I said. And then when I trapped the other two, I brought them downstairs and then they escaped as well. So this is actually one of those mice that ended up going into this trap. So it shows that even though this trap was being rejected at the beginning, as you saw, the um, once you, it's cleaned up properly, the mice will still go into it. Okay, so now we finally re re reached the release point for this particular mouse. And um, so I've had a bit more practice. So now, as you can see, it's just waiting there at the front because it likes to hide in the darkness. And um, so I'm just going to let it out. And there it goes. Okay, so that's the end of of that video. And so, as you can see in the end, because the uh, the the initial trap wasn't didn't seem to be so effective, I ended up having to come up with my own custom solution. And I'll well, I'll try if if anyone's interested, I can sort of give a bit more of a description of it because all it basically consists of is two Arduinos where I have one as a transmitter and the other as a receiver, which basically triggers the um, uh, the, the servo, and that's what pulls away the sort of cardboard so that the trap drops on the mouse. And as you can see, it is very effective. Um, so the next video will just be two more mice I had to deal with, and because of what I'd learned from this video, you, you'll notice that the uh, what I had to do in the next video will actually go by a lot more quickly. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see, you know, join me in the next video if you want to see some more mice being trapped. Okay, see you. And I'd also like to acknowledge my God as being the one who's given me the skill to be able to configure and set up these traps so that they can be used successfully.